All right, and we have an awesome segment, Rick's Corner here, Simple Solutions for Common Questions. And Rick, you wanted to cover a topic that comes up a lot in the support center, um, understanding the different settings that are available to uh, to configure for the lead form. Is that right? Yeah, that is correct, Jason. Um, so this is a this is one of those topics that it's very um, comes up very often, very often, um, and and it's due to the nature, right? The leads are a very powerful um, element within a directory website. So more and more people are really interested in, in learning how that works. Um, and a very cool thing about this section of the platform is that it's controlled mainly through settings. So that's one of the things that we're going to go over today. Awesome. Um, so yeah, I'll pass over the controls to you. And I guess we can start with what the lead form is and then the available uh, settings for it. OK, perfect. So basically, um, like Jason was saying, uh, we're going to talk about leads. Um, and just to give you a brief explanation of leads, well, those are messages that are being sent to the member of a directory website, right? This uh, the, the platform by default has uh, this functionality included. Um, so let me show you real quick here what I'm talking about. So let's say that you get to this website, you're looking for an, an interior designer. So we're gonna click here, search for, for that interior designer. Now, when we get to the uh, search results page, we have this option here called contact now. So let me just go ahead and click on that and I'll show you what I'm talking about. All right, so this is the form, right? This is the form that will basically act as the intermediary between the uh, person that's sending the message and the person that's receiving that message. Now, the reason why we talk about this uh, specific form quite a bit is because people don't really know how to modify or change or add um, fields to this specific form. So one really cool thing about it, as I was saying before, is the fact that you can control this through settings. Now, those settings, let me go ahead and jump to the back end here. So I'm gonna, I'm on the dashboard of the, uh, of the website. I'm simply gonna navigate to leads and lead settings. So here in, inside the lead settings, what we're gonna have is a series of options um, that allow us to control not only the display, but also the functionality of that specific form that we just saw. So let's go ahead and start from the top and we're, we're gonna go over um, these settings real quick here. Um, so maximum acceptance basically makes reference to the amount of people that will also receive a copy of that message, all right, or that referral. So basically the, uh, you, you have the, the ability to control if and the amount of people that are going to receive that additional, um, that, that specific lead. Now you control whether or not a lead is, uh, is gonna be sent to additional people with this setting that we see down here, enable get replies from more members. So this will enable, let's go ahead and switch this to yes. Just again, just clicking on yes, saving the changes. Basically what this does is that it activates Another field inside the form that tells the system, all right, this specific message can be used to, to match with some other member of the, of the website. Now let's go ahead and keep going down here. I'm gonna jump to the form in just a bit, just to show you the different, the different things that we're gonna turn on and off. Um, this one, the height field labels has, has become very um, sought after, to be honest. Uh, so hide the field labels, let's go ahead and switch that to no, which means that it's going to display the height, uh, the field labels. So let me go ahead and save that. Now, when I'm save, when I'm saving this, um, one other thing that uh, it's always very important to keep in mind is that you have to wait a few uh, seconds just to go and and check on the on the on the updates that you have completed. Um, that may vary depending on your own uh, local settings. So just uh, play it safe, give it a couple of seconds, and then go back. And, and refresh. So let's go ahead and refresh the form here and check out the updates that we have done so far. So here we can see like the name, email, those are the field field names and those, those are the ones that we turned on, right, with that setting. Um, and this is the other field that we turn on, which is get replies from more members. So you're sending this a specific uh, message to Summer Thornton for 
or in this example. But if you want to receive more messages or receive additional messages from other members, you can go ahead and choose that here at the bottom. So, so a lot of people really like to hide the, the field name, field label, just because it, it makes it easier to, um, to display on like say a mobile device, it looks, it looks cleaner. So that's also why a lot of people awesome. are really interested in that setting. I, I like that. If you want to just talk about that just for another second, we can see that having the labels there takes up more space on the page. And sometimes it could be redundant where it says name, enter name, email, enter email. But actually, if you're maybe those aren't it's not just saying name, it's asking them a question like what is your name or or something like what's your best phone number where it's where it's a little bit more elaborate then it makes sense to maybe have uh, the field labels. Uh, but in my opinion, um, I like to hide the labels if uh, if they're just, it's, it's redundant because it, it makes the form a little bit more compact and it saves uh, space on the page, especially on mobile devices. Exactly, yeah, it looks cleaner. Um, and in mobile devices, since the, of course the, the screen is smaller than all the, all the space that you can save, it's better, right, the better. All right, uh, let's go ahead and keep going down here because these ones are very, uh, very, very cool, to be honest. Uh, here we have display location fields. So if you want to use that um, as part of this of this form, then you have a few options underneath underneath that. So you have um, making those uh, fields required. You have the ability to turn that on here. Um, and here underneath that, what you have is the display options for the map. So you can go ahead and choose um, the map and the search input. So let's go ahead and choose that one. Um, let's go ahead and switch this to yes. All right. And let me save the the settings here real quick so we can go ahead and check on those um, updates real quick. So it's just taking a while to save. All right, let's go back here. A couple of seconds and let's go ahead and refresh. So basically just turning on the uh, the location um, and the location fields, as you can see, well, it includes um, the the uh, the field for you to type in the uh, the address, and it also includes the map, right? So it also gives you that functionality because that's the one that we chose. But if we uh, if we want to switch that a little, we can. Um, and then we have the option of only displaying the map or only the input. So with the uh, intent of saving space, I would go with the only uh, only input, right? You want to hide the map. Um, if that's what, if, if that's something that you want to take into account. All right. Um, right underneath that, we have the categories field. Um, if whether or not you want to display the categories, um, the uh, the category, whether or not you want to make the category fields required, that's also another setting that you control right here. Um, right underneath that, we have this. This has been added recently. Um, display the preferred reply reply day and the reply time. So if you want to go ahead and switch those on, actually they're on right now. But if you want to turn them off again, you have the the ability to do so right here. Let's, let's turn those off and turn the categories on. Just Category to right. Modify this form. Display the categories field. Yes, awesome. And then here we have an option for those categories, Jason. So do you want to use uh, the top and the sub level? Um, do you want to use the tub and the sub and the sub sub? Do you have a specific combination that you want to use? Um, I think top and sub is good. So you can see. All right. Perfect. Tub and sub level categories. All right. Let's go ahead and save this. Now, again, choosing if you want to show categories or what what the visitor is going to select really depends on how your category structure on your site is set up. Uh, keep in mind that the location and the category fields um, are the identifiers that the system uses when it wants to match leads with other members besides the member that uh, you're, you're contacting directly. So in the way the system knows to match this lead with other members in your database is if the location field matches and or uh, one of the category um, hits uh, as a match. Uh, so when you add those fields, you're basically helping the system provide better matches for a lead with members who probably provide a related service. 
Yep, correct. So yeah, like like you just said, it really depends on on your own structure and what would make sense to you, right? So you don't need again, you don't want to make it redundant. You don't want to have extra information that's not needed. So um, this is what we had. We had preferred replay re reply day and reply time. So let's go ahead and refresh this real quick. All right. So those fields are gone. And then if we scroll down the form, we have um, the top category and we have the subcategory right here for us to choose. So it's super useful, super, super useful. There was a time when this was in a setting, it was a lot tougher than what it is right now to modify. So great, the, the settings um, are, all, are all basically turned on with uh, with regards to the category. So that's what we have here. And then underneath that with the, with the form, you have a, a regular field for the user to type in um, the message that they want to get across. So basically that's the all of the settings that we have here for the general lead setting. So that means that this is like, this is the, the general overview of, of the different functionality that you have available. Um, let's go ahead and jump real quick here to um, receiving direct leads and what this will what these settings will basically control. So again, we're talking about the messages that get sent directly to the user. Uh, or the member of your website. Um, so basically, what we have here are the different options and the different um, the different statuses that you can go ahead and choose those messages to come through as. So we have the the type of lead. We can go ahead and count that as either pending or accepted right away as soon as it it shows up on the member uh, on the member's dashboard. Um, we have the the way that your members are going to be notified when a, when one of these messages is sent, so you can go ahead and and notify them by sending them a preview of the of the message or sending sending the the member of the website the complete um, the complete message. Um, a few more options that you have here: you have the preview email template. So in case you want to go with that way of notifying the the member, you can go ahead and choose the email template. Um, so if you haven't if you haven't updated that, then you can just leave it as this. Um, or if you've modif modified that specific template, you can then just go ahead and leave it as is. Um, or if you have created a new template, you can choose it from the dropdown. And if you go with the other option, which is the complete message, then again, you have just a simple dropdown, same functionality that we have here for you to choose the type of message or the email template that you're going to use. Um, and right underneath that, what we have is the ability for you to copy the admin. So if you want to be um, you as the owner of the, as the owner of the website, want to be notified when one of these messages comes through. Super that's, useful as well. That's fantastic. Can you scroll up for just a second there? Yeah. Um, I just want to touch on so receiving direct leads. That's when a member gets a message directly from their profile page. So if you want them to, if you want that message to in that moment get sent to the member so they get a notification, you definitely want to set this to yes. If you as the website owner want to moderate all messages before the member sees them, you want to set this to no and then periodically you want to log into your admin and then manually match that message uh, with the member. Maybe you're doing some moder moderation to make sure of the authenticity of that lead. Um, and then the count message as pending or complete, if you want to toggle that open, is if if the message is going to go directly to the member, um, pending means they need to manually accept it or pay for the lead. Accepted means that they don't need to pay for it. It's already going to be, all the information is going to be available uh, for them there. Um, but Rick, thank you uh, so much. What's in the additional notifications tab there? All right, that's a great question, Jason. Um, let's go ahead and jump to the additional notifications here. Um, so what we have here is email the admin when the lead is submitted. Um, again, giving you more control of of what happens when the lead is sent. Um, and then here you have the option to choose what email template to use. Awesome. And there's one more tab there for the visitor. Correct. So this this is going to be for the admin of the website. This is what happens with the user of the website, right? So keep in mind that in, in this equation, there's like three factors. There's the user of the website, the member of the website, and the admin of the website. Right. So, right, the email. And then what we have here is just very straightforward, super straightforward. I have to uh, give a shout out to uh, those settings and the way that they're self-explanatory. So 
Um, the, it's just the email visitor. After the lead is submitted, you have the option to send them a message, right? Um, so after they send the, the lead or the message to the user of the website, um, if you want to notify them, um, again, adding validity or just simply um, making the confirmation. Yeah, right. exactly. So then you have the option to choose the email template, um, whether or not you want to copy again the admin on this email, the one that's sent out that's sent out to the user, um, and then the variable that you want to use for that specific template. Fantastic. I know you just covered a lot. Um, if anyone has questions on on these settings right now, uh, please feel free to raise your hand. Hey, Jason, Peter actually uh, asked a good question. He said he wanted to know if there was any way to prevent website visitors from entering their phone number, their email address directly into that comment section of the lead submission form. Because if they do, then there's really no need for the members to purchase the leads if they have their contact information already right there. So that's a that's a question we, we actually hear a lot. And I've seen some websites go through some extreme lengths to prevent someone from typing their phone number or email address. Um, you could you could do a small customization where you restrict numbers or the at sign uh, from being written in the message, but you know people can put spaces in between them. They can write out the numbers, like my phone number is one, two, you know, et cetera, et cetera. Um, if people are gaming your system like that, they find value in it. Um, I wouldn't worry too much. It's probably just few and far between. But if it's really important to you, you can kind of work with a developer to restrict uh, certain. Uh, letters or phrases from being inputted um, into that. But it's going to get complicated because if someone's typing in their phone number and they use, and, and you're not going to allow someone to, to type the number one, you know, uh, like O N E. And if the person's going to write, I have one question for you, and then you're going to block that message. So you're probably going to get a lot of false positives um, if you start restricting. The, like numbers and, and and things like that and phrases like th that are just common numbers. Um, so the or one one option right would be um, if the website isn't getting too many leads where it's not impossible for the website admin to moderate, moderate. them manually. That, yeah. that's that's one option. Yeah, you can moderate. Um, and as mo with, with moderating the the messages, um, Rick, I'm just gonna pass the controls over to myself real quick. Let me show you guys how you could edit a lead um, before it goes out uh, to uh, a member. So if you go to your leads and let's go to manage leads. Okay, great. So we're looking at a lead. Um, you can actually edit a lead. And so this is kind of an extrapolation of what the, the lead form is on the front end of the site. Um, and in this case, you can uh, you can edit the message and remove any parts of the message you want. Some people who um, who moderate leads actually call the lead, verify the phone number, the email, and actually gain more information that the, the lead is looking for from the professional, and they'll add it either into the message or as um, internal notes uh, for the lead, uh, which you could write here, internal notes to the member. You can write, you know, we spoke with this person. Uh, they want to get started soon, and that will be attached to um, the lead when the member is looking at it. So, uh, yeah, definitely to, to answer that question, you can go ahead and moderate the leads and edit out um, any sensitive information that would be part of the regular message that's that's going to encourage the member to purchase the lead. Okay, I think we're good on the, the lead settings there. All right.